Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Ponchasu and welcome back to my Rift Bomb playthrough slash tutorial. This one might be a bit shorter than all of my other videos in the series thus far. I am, apo I am apologizing, well I guess I am, for that, but unfortunately my headache is not going away. In fact, it's stronger than before and uh, saying that I'll certainly make this video as long as I always did would be... I mean, it's a possibility that it will happen, but I don't think I'll be capable of such a feat, so I can't promise that exactly. Incidentally, the reason why I wasn't posting videos in the last two days is also, again, because I'm not feeling very well. Which, uh, don't get me wrong, is really a huge annoyance, because I do want to be posting those videos, but it's not easy to focus on the game when you have a massive headache. Right now, I just took some painkillers, so... Everything should be fine for some time. Anywho, let's go ahead and start thinking. So, I know, I realize there's one thing that so far hasn't been pointed out in the comments, but somebody might do this at one point. And that is, okay, so my whole deal with the religious party is that I wanted to stay in power because by using the fact that I'm a republic, I can uh, utilize in the future the... Saints and Sinners Law, which forces every planet in the Empire to be happy, which is extraordinarily powerful. However, there is an argument to be made that there is a law that in edge case scenarios is not quite as powerful, but in most cases is equally if not even more powerful because it's easier to uh, maintain enacted. And that law is, so let me just find it, us or them. As you can see, it also benefits from the fact that we are a republic, it gives us a ridiculous amount of approval per war on every individual system. So, if I were to be a warmonger, and let's face it, we all know that I am, then, well, I could have, in theory, went for this though. It would be far easier to have the militists in the government, in fact, it's very hard not to have them in the government, which is something that I believe Ampadu should change fix in the future because it certainly does require a fix because it's just way too easy to have them in the lead anyway that without talking too much about the game balance or it's not really balanced per se but it's just a bit of an annoyance anyway i could have gone for that why have i not gone for that why am i gunning for the much more difficult to achieve saints and sinners bill well the reason for that is I wanted to make this playthrough on the I based around the idea that I'm not necessarily going to play as a warmonger in this series. I don't want to be a warmonger in every single series that I record because that would be boring. Of course, it is. I don't get me wrong. Playing as a Riftborn as a warmonger is easy, and I'll probably, to a bigger or lesser extent, be a warmonger in this series, but I want to at least give myself the opportunity not to be. I know that my instincts will probably make me into a warmonger at some point, especially since I'm best as a warmonger. If you recall in Endless Legend, for instance, my best faction ever were the other mages. I was amazing as them, and there's no need to pretend like I'm humble about that, because I'm not. I really was great as the other mages. And my strategy was to rush and murder everybody. A warmonger at the heart. However, I do want to try and make it so that in this series I show a path to other victory taps, and such victory taps involve, for instance, the Wonder Victor tap, which can be achieved with quite well if we go for the religious laws, because this allows us to stay at peace and not spend too much on the military side of things and instead focus on the economy side of things, which is tied to the Wonder Victory. Additionally, in order to gain Wonder Victory, you probably need a lot of colonies because those Wonder structures they require a lot of different resources. And probably more sustenance than you could have, even if you were to gain all of the booster program type benefits in your empire. So, if you don't want to waste too much time and energy getting all of the different approval ratings, instead you can just go for the religious party law, which I was talking about in this whole, during this whole playthrough, and as such, gain access to all the assistance you need to make the obelisks of all space time. Mm. You have to keep in mind that Riftborn are quite adept at grabbing this victory tab condition as well because of their tendency to be very good at industry production because that's usually what Riftborn players do in order to have a stable empire. You focus on industry, right? 
And additionally, because you can, you have numerous ways of boosting uh, production and whatnot, and because of your singularities, obviously because of all space-time are much easier to construct for Rift One than many other players. So, in this case, yeah, you may not want to be a militarist, you may just want to be pacifist and just take your shot at a of all space time, but to do that, the religious law is actually very, very helpful. So, just so that those of you who watch this playthrough who don't want to be a warmonger, it's just for those people, I am trying to give you, show you the options, and religious party is one of such options. Of course, this does also allow you to go for some other things. For instance, you may not want to expand too much at all and just grab science victory instead, but the caveat is that if you do want to grab science victory, Without explaining too much, you don't actually need the religious law either because, I mean, look at that. As long as I don't overexpand, my Empire Pro is humongously good because of the new colony thing. New colony, of course, will go away, but there are other ways that you can stay at higher pool, of course, by just grabbing more approval structures. And as long as you stay within the limit, being ecstatic or devoted uh, and going for science victory should be doable. And, uh, but economy is less of a case. For economy, you really do kind of want to have a wide empire. Like, seriously, you really, really do. And science, in some way, you also kind of benefit from a wider empire. It's harder to do. I mean, not necessarily harder to do, but it's just... Science with Victor is kind of weird. Sometimes it's uh, easier to do when you have a tall empire. Sometimes it's when you have a wide empire. Either way, wide empire never hurts. And Sense and Sinner's Bill helps you have a wide empire. So that's why it's so good. Because with Sense and Sinners, you can even go for Conquest Victory, actually, if you somehow can get uh, the religious party in the lead, despite being at war with everybody. Because even with, if you go for the Conquest Victory, even being at war with everybody might not be enough to have your Empire actually happy, because having that many planets will just make everybody absolutely hate you in your Empire for some reason. But Sense and Sinners eliminates this problem entirely. Now, I know I spent a lot of time just talking about this one issue. Maybe I shouldn't have, maybe it wasn't troubling you at all, but I feel like clarifying my actions was quite important. This is why I recorded this series in the first place. Now, what do I do next? Well, I prepare for the end 10 button, uh, I mean, just to end the 10. Now, actions are coming, so we have to keep that in mind. What is Talifar going to do? It's going to get us compressed singularity. I need more singularities. I only have one active. It's about to stop being active. And my home system is not singularized in any way either, which is not necessarily good. So, let me drink some tea first and queue this up. And then... Uh, I think I might actually go for predictive logistics. It does take uh, the considerable amount because uh, some men I cannot speak. I'm sorry. It does take long more time than making another population, but then again, it's also f way more effective with two plants already in the system. That would be extra 40 industry production. That's a lot of industry production. This will really allow the system to be kick started quite well. And the more we work on this improvement, the cheaper it will become, and we might even be able to buy it out. Alrighty then. Now. What else do I need? Oh yeah, what else do I need to do? Well, it's kind of obvious. Empire dust. I have this in income, this in the amount of it, but elections are coming, and I'm going to have to spend a lot of money if I want to use the, uh, if I want to use the. Oh, what, what am I going for? Sorry, it's really difficult to focus, but I do want to record this video, so I'm going to keep going. So anyway, if I want to have, to give a boost to my religious party, I'm going to need a lot of dust, is what I meant to say. So I can do this by, as you can see, I checked this beforehand, before I started recording the video. I can do this by selling Adamantian. Right now, Adamantian is on the man, in demand on the marketplace. You do need to keep an eye on those announcements. They are actually kind of useful from time to time. And in this case, that's certainly no exception, because if you have a quick look, see, it doesn't look like any AI is actually buying Adamantium right now, so it maybe won't even hurt that much if I sell it, but for some reason it's still in high demand, so I can sell a lot of it, and again, more than enough dust to actually support uh, the extra, what you might call it, support, well, I don't want to repeat myself, but whatever, for the religious party. In fact, I might even sell more of the mantle, but before I do that, I need to consider if I don't actually need it for something. So let me quickly check the science tree, because I don't trust myself when I have a headache. 
I need mostly antimatter for improvements effect because antimatter is used for every other thing is to do, which is, I mean, that's great. Uh, that thing, it does reuse a Dementian, right, but only 10 of it, so only 10 for that. Anything else over here? Uh, I mean, the microwave pops are amazing, I almost certainly grab them, especially since I want antimatter. But how many of those do I need? Let's assume I'll have 10 systems in the new future at most. So that's 20, so that I need 30 to save up 30 adamantian so far, it looks like. Do I need any more adamantian really at this point? Fabrication license does require it. Even if I make it all, assume, let's assume I only make it in some of the most crucial, important and productive systems. Let's say 5 systems, so 5 times 5, 25. So that's 55 adamantian I will need to have. I might get more, but I might not, so with that in mind, I can only really afford to sell 15 of it. And if I sell 15 of it, that will be... Not quite enough, right? Right, it won't be quite enough. What if I also sell something else? What else can I sell that is also in relatively high demand? I mean, I need both uh, titanium and hyperium, and I don't want to sell Antantamara, obviously. I can sell some of the luxuries, however. Jadonix is a candidate. That glitter is also a candidate. How much do you sell for? Basically nothing. How much does Jadonix sell for? 400. Well, that would... Mm, maybe. I kind of wanted to start saving it up for level 3 system improvement, but I still have ways to go before that, I suppose. Maybe there is a... Yeah, I think I'll do that. So, I'll sell 15 Adamantian. Because I will need to have the spare, in case I never find more Adamantian in the future. Or alternatively, you know what I can do after selling this Adamantian? In the future, if I need it, I can just buy more. So, in the nearest future, let me think again. In the very, very near future, how much will I really need? I still have some time before you use microwave pipes and before I make this ridiculously difficult to achieve temp uh, temp of temporal paradox. Probably only after the started war, so I don't need that in the near future. Then again, I need 10. I need to save at least 10 because I need to be guaranteed to have a guaranteed chance of grabbing that. And I probably also want to have a guaranteed chance of making at least. Uh, Three of those, let's say. So, 1525, I will allow myself to get down to 25 Adamantian, which means that I can get rid of 45, right? I hope my math is correct. It might not be because I have a headache, but I think, yeah. Alright, 25, that's just fine. That'll give me a lot of dust. That dust might be useful for many, great many things. That's why I wanted to sell it all in bulk, because uh, at the end the price will crash after doing this. Anywho. With that out of the way, I think I can now safely end the 10 after 13 long minutes. That was uh, annoying, but whatever. So, very strict penalty to competitors. Uh, let's see. Idea of the chosen party is not one of your favorites, or I can give you a very strict boost. What do I want more? I think strong or lobbying will work best because, technically speaking, the religious are kind of behind. Almost everybody, even pacifists, have a shot at winning the election, so... I'll go for strong arm lobbying and see where that gets me. It does use up a lot of my dust resources, but I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Alright, okay, I may have overdone it! <laughs> okay, oh, oh man. That's not the way I wanted, actually. <laughs> Alright, so, let me get... I'll tell you what my thought process was behind this. First of all, I assumed that under no circumstances can the Industrialist Party lose this election, as in not come in first place. I was wrong, I underestimated those uh, underhanded tricks I did. Which really surprised me, I'll be honest with you, but uh, I mean, that's good to know that they are very effective. <laughs> uh, so that was the first thing. And the second thing is, I wanted the religious party to have as much support as humanly possible, because by giving them a lot of support, I wanted to increase the amount of power this party would gain, because again, I want to gain access to Saints and Sinners bill as quickly as possible, so I wanted to give them a lot of experience. Well, that uh, did backfire, admittedly. I gained all access to no new laws as a result. But maybe without that, it will take me even longer to actually get rid of this in the government. I do have access to uh, Righteous Fury now. 
which is interesting because this allows me to attack the Horatio without giving too much power to the military uh, faction. However, Ovex considered this is a way less uh, useful uh, law than what Industrious gave to me. So I should have used a less powerful tool. I certainly should have, and I would have saved some more dust. But I really, really did not expect the Industrialist to, the industrialist to lose. Oh well, might be. Things like that do happen sometimes, I suppose. Alrighty then. Uh, Generation Gamma, this thing almost always happens to me at some point in the game, so that's uh, whatever. I mean, at least when I cheat during elections, and I almost always do. So, regardless, let's think how we want to deal with that. Okay, so I can either go for conscription. Now, this is weird because, on one hand, it tells you that it boosts the industrialist ideology because that's what the icon, but it also says it increases the militarist ideology. That's not good, but on the other hand, I don't want food, I want uh, manpower instead of food. So, mechanically I want this, politically I don't. So that's the weird thing about this. Entertain. Well, I don't want encouragers to be in the lead, that's for sure. And of those things, they will be kind of meaningless. And educate. Extra science and increase the scientist's political ideology. So getting scientists in the government is not the worst thing ever. Truly, really scientists are just all around really good party to have, regardless of the situation almost. They have good laws and... Uh, that was very strict party to have, so yeah, I, I'm not against that. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the primary law, the one that you get if you have if they win the election, that gives you access to better the future eras. Because usually, you can't make the best use of that. Sometimes you can, especially with cell phones, but otherwise, nah. Still, they are pretty good party to have, and the exercise. I will not say no to that. Alrighty then. So those things uh, that happened, and now. This looks really weird. I did not see it coming, I'll be honest. I'm glad, I'm glad these guys are still in the government, because if I somehow knocked Hidosius out, that would be really weird. But I don't think that was even possible or doable. I should have used the less expensive option, though. Especially since now I might not be able to repeat this process in the next election. And I certainly do want to, because militaries are about to gain a big boost. So, oh well. Horatius uh, gained a new home, so that's fine, now I have them here, and as you can see they give me extra approval and food. That's why I said they are really cancerous to our, our economy, but whatever I suppose, uh, they are still some extra, you know, production, so that's okay. Alrighty then, I want this Denmark University really badly, but what I think is even more important is getting this modernization thing, so let's go ahead and grab it regardless. And people are growing, Ocean is about to be ground, but that's fine, let's see. I've got Lost Horatia, who... what was I planning to do with them again? Explore things? I should have just sent probes away from Centaurus, I think. Although I did kind of want to send them to Muses, I think. Those guys have 5 more, and this guy has 6 more, so he's actually faster than the Lost Horatio. So you know what? Hardless Horatio, you go back over there, and Shadow, you go get ready to get to Muses. In fact, start getting to Muses ASAP. Because I do want to try to get some extra support from the Pilgrims, and I still have something I can explore for them. And it would be great if I could make them work for me. Although I don't actually need to do this, in a few turns they will actually allow me to assist them. But I will not have enough influence to assist them, which is going to be a bit of a problem. I need to think about that, I need to gain extra influence. I could do that by cancelling some of those laws. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I should potentially. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it in a second. For the time being, oh man, uh, let's see. Extra citizen development, I'll never say no to that, but I'll probably... I need that in the system where the Horatio are actually, because I want to ship them around. Then again, Horatio are even worse than the Epiphyses are, actually, because Epiphyses increase, a bit, or how are they called, increase my industry production at least by a little bit. Horatio in the future will increase my nothing. Still though, I do want to grow as quickly as possible and have a lot of Fitzy, so let's go ahead and get ready to start shipping them overseas. The, you know, not literally overseas, but kind of overseas. And let's see, Altair... 
the reason why I think about that is because maybe the Vulgus will send some population over to Altair, but I don't think it's all that likely. So Fighters is probably the third place where I want to do this. But Fighters is kind of currently under, yeah, Compression Singularity. So I don't think using that really makes sense until the Singularity actually runs out. That's what I think right now at the very least. So instead, let's go ahead and make that a thing. Work on that while the Singularity is active. And you, again, I just enacted the Singularity, so I'm not gonna work on level 2 colonization test. I do need that, despite the Singularity. It was a mistake to activate the Singularity, but I do need to start shipping people overseas. I don't know why I say overseas, by the way, when it's not... Well, there are no seas in between those systems, but whatever. There's a sea of stars, perhaps, but now I don't think there is. Anywho, Altair, what do I do with you? You could use... I mean, except 20 per plant, that's great, isn't it? And it costs the same amount of industry production as AI labor as well, so yeah, I'll go ahead and grab that. Although, I can also go for compression singularity as well, and that will be great. And then, predictive logistics, so let's do that. And Tamos needs something. Oh yeah, Tamos is that thing that I forgot about already. Well, you need more population badly, so start working on that. And we can end the turn now. And I'll drink some tea. But then I'm okay. <laughs> that actually sounded really sad, didn't it? Anyway, now I need to attract some extra population to my empire. I would love to do that. Because I really need more influence. Because I really want to assist the pilgrims. Anywho. What I'm going to do now is I'll let you create the modernization. And I think for a moment... Alright, let's see. First of all, approval wise. Is the thing law still enacted? I think it is. Let me just double check that. Systems, law. Oh, it's not enacted anymore. So I can just freely cancel that. So abolish law. But if I want to gain influence, I need to abolish both of these laws. Now I gain a decent amount of influence by then. So I can go ahead and have less dust income but more science income. And then. All those things are tempting, but I don't think I'll go for anything else right now. I can go for even more dust, but the expense of approval, but I don't want to do that. So I'll just leave one thing empty. And let's keep moving along, and let's see, what's that? Academy power increased. Do I care about that? Not in the slightest. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. And you just, uh, let's go ahead and explore some of the galaxy. So let's send my probes like this and this. In a vague direction of everything and see what I can see. Now meanwhile I just finished making my first ship design. I will need a second one, definitely, no matter what happens. So let's go ahead and start working on that. What's my manpower cap actually? Do I need to increase it? Well, I might as well increase it real quick and work on split second ablatives. And then work on those things. Because I will need both of these ships if I want to have a fleet that can stand on uh, its own. And, uh, wait a second, do I have the speed thingy? Yes, I do have the speed thingy. That's good. A ship needs orders, that's you. You just wait until you have more probes so I can scatter some more territory. Actually, no, never mind. I'll send him to Feia. Well, I? Yes, I will. There might be a system over here as well, after all. So, he will have plenty of time to replenish his probes and also explore curiosity on Feia. What about you? You're a revealer. Oh, there's actually curiosity on Fighters that he's about to reveal. That's annoying. Oh, well, I'll save the singularity until Fighters is done with production. Unless I put it on Telepha. Which I definitely will. I like that idea. And then I'll make another compression singularity over here. And then activate it in Fighters at the next end. I like that. Let's go ahead and do it. And drink some tea. Alright, Pilgrims are now friendly. Uh, how much influence do I need for the assist? 10, 210. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. I hope that this quest is good. Oh. Um. No, it's not good. It's really not. I mean, now that you think about it, it's not good. But I will achieve it, I think. No matter if I want to do it or to do it or not. And I really don't, but I think it, uh, we'll see. It's a really annoying quest to have rece to receive, you know. I I would rather not. I would rather it be another quest, but I suppose I don't really have much in the way of choice in that matter, do I? Anyway, Gemini, you need a lot of science. Actually only 60, which is not necessarily a lot, but you need a lot more than what you have right now. 
So this is already this is going to provide you already a decent increase, and uh, this Cerebri Reality will do the same. In fact, instead of boosting fighters, I will boost Gemini to let it work a little bit faster on everything, which is really just a little. So maybe population first. Yeah, make a population real real quick so I can make other things faster. Thank you very much. Now I think I should be able to ship population out elsewhere now. So you just sir, you go ahead and ship me an Epistus to where exactly to fight us. Now I really want Fighters to be this super production system. Then again, it doesn't matter, Epistus are still going to be increase my production. And just make me spend less industry on just making my population, you know, so it is not a bad idea. Taylor Fire is going to send a Horatia over to... What's it called again? Temos. So that Temos is moving... Actually, no, I can send it to Gemini. So that Gemini is a little bit more productive. I like that idea. So let's go ahead and go to Gemini. That's an easy. Even though on Temos, yeah, they would arrive a lot faster. But I need to somebody to be on Gemini as quickly as possible, I think. And the Horatia getting there is not a bad idea. Then again, no, I don't want to do that because I don't think I'm, I will be able to get the Horatio race benefit. I don't think I'll be able to breed them enough. So, and, I, and because uh, Gemini has so few spots for population, I want to only have the best kind of population on Gemini. So for that reason, I will not send Horatio over there. Instead, I will send it to Tamils, I think. So that's, uh, so yeah, all right. That's uh, my reasoning for that. Tamils, meanwhile, since you're going to get uh, another population, start working maybe on that. Independent transport another work is going to be very useful on Tamils too. And now that that is resolved, I can move all my ships around. No need to create, design any of my warships yet. All right, Shadow. Do I want to start moving him over there? Yes, I do, but I, it wouldn't hurt to have it send some of its probes because he might get killed off, for all we know. So one, two, three. How long until you create any, another probe? Well, just one ten. So let's go ahead and set a probe over that way. Okay, that's surprising. Okay, all right. So I activated a competitive quest. I actually don't recall ever seeing it. So let me go. In fact, I'm going to read it out loud just because I have. I don't think I have ever seen it. In fact, I said I never have, which is rare. rare. I didn't think there was the quest that I haven't discovered yet. So anyway, with your navigators, while your navigators are wise enough to maintain distance for the terrific gravitation forces of a neutron star, it appears that another was not so lucky. You receive weak signals from an ancient boy, indicating that uh, a virtual endless is imprisoned in the powerful magnetic field of this astronomical anomaly. The boy, 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 is that how it's spelled? I think it is. Transmits with its distress signal a series of plans for massive platforms for scientific research. If you build enough of these on your plans, they will automatically coordinate to trigger disruption in the new distance blah 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 field and free the trap to virtual. While this sounds great, it appears that the virtual has also used your account system and its knowledge uh, of the galaxy to be in the same message to every other faction in the galaxy. So, I need to build three gamma analysis platforms in order to trigger an anomaly, and in return, I will gain an virtual and a serial. <sighs> Bad news, it's a virtual and a serial. What does it mean? It means he's useless as his faction, because for whatever reason, Ampered Studios, with all the respect, I love Ampered, but they have decided to make virtual endless a crap faction when it comes to hero abilities. Like, they really are. They're really bad. Their abilities don't synergize at all and they're just meh all around. The good thing, however, is that he's a seeker. That makes him a good army admiral. But then again, the bad news is I didn't need another seeker because my own faction quest is going to give him to me. But he is level 12, so I might try to get it. Anywho, new to the star. Yep, we all know what new to the stars do. Thank you very much. Now, what else do we have? Shadow, 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 shadow. Yep, start moving. I said start moving. Next turn, I suppose, but still, start moving nevertheless. And let's go ahead and end the turn. And. Uh... Alright, another quest. And I, I covered a lot of the galaxy with my probes, which I'm really happy about. So let's see. I can. Oh, yeah, it's the call thingy. So, I, I hate it because either way, 
I gain random technology and experts many times that I hate getting random technologies. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I seem to be getting this quest in the every single playthrough I in Let's Space 2. Like, literally every single one of them. <sighs> That's annoying. I mean... I don't care. Either way, the result is annoying. I'll save the inhabitants. Because maybe I'll never get enough uh, food. What I mean, it's, I'm lying to myself. I'm about to gain enough food, if, if I don't already. No, actually, I don't have enough food yet, so maybe I'll never complete this quest, which I would like to be the case, actually. I mean, the quest, this quest can give you the access to pirate lasers, actually, now that I think about it. And pirate lasers are very powerful lasers that don't, that don't require any surgical resources to make and use. There is an argument to complete this quest, but whatever. I already made my decision and it's too late to go back on it. Maybe that's why I shouldn't record when I have a headache, but if that was the case, I wouldn't be able to record at all for several days, and you wouldn't be able to see a video, and that would not be ideal now, would it? Okay, then. Let's see, is there anything else that I need to do? Fight test needs some orders, so... Gamma S is platform. Ooh! Oh my! That's interesting! I like this, uh, I like this improvement a lot, actually. I wish it was easier, m more available and appeared more frequently, because like I said, I never, I have never gotten this thing. I'm, I known to oftentimes go against the odds, for instance, in Dungeon of the Endless, I still have not unlocked the Pug special hero, and I always go for random. Which, uh, I mean, it always annoys me, and guys at Amplitude always have a good laugh at me for that. I don't laugh at that, for that reason, so yeah. I'm known to sometimes have uh, really bad luck. Oftentimes, in fact. Anyway, what does this system need? I would say that it needs... Uh, well, I don't really know what it needs. You know what? In fact, I'm going to end this video here, because I might make more mistakes. Now, I need to queue up some research right now as well, and I think what I need, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure what I need is autonomous construction because I want to increase the amount of ships I can have in my, in a single fleet. And after that, I'll probably go for focus plasma to gain basic reactive plating because I need to put the plating on my triangular class ships, and then I can use my tetrahedral class ships to give uh, to give and install basic flotilla ships, shields on them to protect the rest of my fleet from energy weapons. That's what I think I want to do. Anyway, I'm not gonna make any risks. Ah, uh, whatever. I... some risk. You, some risks you gotta take. And this system, it's been due for more population, I think, for a while now. So let's give it another rift bond. That's gonna be fine. I don't think it's a wrong decision per se. I can end the 10, and after ending this 10 is when I'm actually going to end this video. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was Pawn Chosu, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.